Good evening and welcome to the November 1st, 2012 meeting of the Northampton City Council. Uh, I am Mayor David Markowitz and we begin each of these meetings with a public comment session. Um, over my shoulder is a three minute timer and we ask folks to please observe that time limit with your remarks. I have a sign up list and I would ask that as people come up and speak that they identify themselves by name and address uh, for the record. Um, the first person who signed up to speak this evening is Tom Pease. Good evening. I'm Tom Pease and I live at 130 Spring Street in Florence. I'm spokesman for the Veterans Council of Northampton. Good evening, Mayor, Councilman, Councilwomen. Uh, this is just a reminder of our annual Veterans Day or Veterans Breakfast that is uh, being presented by the Veterans Council of Northampton. It is being held this Saturday at 9 o'clock at the Elks Lodge 997 uh, Spring Street in Florence. Um, this year we're honoring all the veterans, all of our local veterans. Our guest speaker this year is Jeff Finley of Florence. He's uh, active army duty. He served in Iran and Afghanistan. He's a local boy. There are tickets still available at the door. They're $11 per person. We'll save some. Hope to see everyone there for this event. You know, the, we put, the guys put a lot of effort into it. And kudos to the Elks Lodge. Again, they stepped up and they provided the uh, venue for us to hold us. So, you know, hats off to them. Also, this year's Veterans Day Parade which is held on November the 11th. We've moved the time up till noontime. We'll step off at Lampin Park at 12 o'clock in respect to our local churches. We don't want to make a lot of commotion coming up Main Street with the band and all. So we step off at 12 o'clock on Veterans Day, a week from this Sunday. And it'll commence at Lam uh, Lampin Park and it'll end at Pulaski Park. And this year's guest speaker is Lieutenant Colonel Jim Keith, active and he's also a local gentleman from Florence. So again, we hope to see one and all there in the course of parade. <coughs> we'll have a lot of people there during the parade. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Pease. The next speaker is Glenn Johnson. <coughs> I'm Glenn Johnson uh, from the Northampton Prevention Coalition, which is at 140 um, Pine Street in Florence, the Florence Community Center. And I'm, uh, thank you, Mayor, Thady, thank you, City Council, for um, the opportunity to speak and for your proclamation about never another death month that's going to be happening later in the evening. Um, uh, our coalition was very honored to be in mentioned in the proclamation. Um, we really feel that we need people working on all sides of the use substance use uh, problem, prevention, outreach, and treatment. Our coalition is a community-driven effort uh, working to prevent <coughs> underage drinking, youth marijuana use, and prescription drug abuse. We welcome the involvement of everyone in our coalition and are happy to collaborate with other agencies on other sides of this issue whenever possible. We want to thank all the organizations working so that there will never be another death. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn. The next speaker is Joyce Sabin Russia. Sabin Russia, 67 West Street, and I want to thank you all, and especially Mayor, for the proclamation of Never Another Death Month again this year. And um, I thought I'd share Never Another Death's mission this year with you. Uh, our mission is to get the word out, to not play with heroin. We offer support, compassion, guidance, a ride to detox, encouragement, sometimes hugs, a cup of coffee, suggestions, a ride to a meeting a smile and kind words to young addicts and their families. Our ultimate goal is to raise awareness that addiction is a disease and to increase the availability of treatment beds so there is never another death awaiting a bed in treatment facility. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. The next speaker this evening is Steve Connor. Hi, I'm Steve Connor from 19 Church Street. I come before you for two things. Um, number one, um, this Sunday from 1 to 4 o'clock down at the World War II Club on Conn Street, we are having a fundraising spaghetti supper. It is to benefit Homeward Vets, Inc. It's a nonprofit that just started this spring. It is in existence 
basically for the people who know me and know what I've been doing out of my office as the Director of Veterans Services is dealing with a lot of homeless vets. We've got a lot of programs to help them get apartments, get them in. The one thing that we didn't really think about, and I had to deal with this personally, I had a young man work in my office and I helped him get a VASH voucher to move it into an apartment. Two months after he got his apartment, he was all excited because he was meeting with his caseworker. They were going out to get a bed. And I went, you're getting a bed. What have you been sleeping on? You know, the sleeping bag that I had in the barn. He had an apartment with no furnishings. Luckily, we have two people, Lisa and David Felty. They live in East Hampton. She works for the Northampton Housing Authority. They saw this. They started collecting furniture and keeping it in their barn. So if somebody needed something, they would go and do it. Well, they did that for many months. The barn got too small to do it, and it got too big. Uh, the need got too big. So they started a nonprofit. It's called Homeward Vets. The problem we have right now is there's not enough money to get the insurance to go pick up furniture, store it, and get it to these people. It is a big need. I can tell you personally it's a big need. So we are having a spaghetti supper. It's 1 to 4 o'clock at the World War II Club down on Con Street, 50 Con Street. It's $7 for adults, and it's a great cause. We'll have some raffles. David? It's this Sunday, November, blah, blah, blah. November 4th. The Veterans Breakfast is the 3rd. Um, and on that, I also wanted to add to what was said about the Veterans Breakfast and the Veterans Day Parade. At the event at the Elks Club, we are having the JFK, no, the JF Keys, the a cappella group from there, are going to perform. Um, so we're really thrilled with them. And then at the parade, <coughs> uh, not only are we going to have the excellent high school band, but we also have the Northamptons, who are also going to be formed. So this is going to be really exciting for us. We're growing, and, it's, and we're really happy about it. And there was one other thing I wanted to say. Oh, and the bad news is I am now president of the Massachusetts Veterans Service Officers Association. <laughs> I have to be at the governor's event at the State House on Veterans Day. So this Veterans Day, Aww. I will not be at the event, which I'm really sad. I've no. not missed it since I had the job. And I just got rung by the bell. So I won't be at the event. I'll be at the State House thinking about all of you and missing the Northamptons. But thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. We'll miss you, too. Uh, the next speaker is Todd Thompson. Did you see Hi, my name is um, Todd Thompson, 76 Massasoit Street. Um, I served on the Charter Drafting Committee uh, that wrapped up its work uh, back in March. And I'm here today to encourage uh, voters to go out to the polls on Tuesday and uh, pick up a ballot um, and vote yes for the charter. Um, I wanted to, in the two minutes and 45 seconds I have, I wanted to quickly review the work that we did and why I so strongly encourage you to vote yes. Um, our goal initially uh, was to, to modernize our antiquated charter, um, to make it comprehensive, concise, efficient. Um, we, uh, starting in October, we, had, we held a series of 14 meetings. Um, all of those were open to the public, and we invited public comment at every meeting. We held two public forums in this room that were televised. We took questions and input from the public. It was very helpful. We also held one leadership forum, um, and we invited current and former mayors, council members, um, uh, school co committee members as well, and they offered a lot of input on how to improve the city's charter. Um, we are not proposing radical change. Our goal was to have a consensus document that transitioned the old charter to sort of the new modern era. Um, some of the big changes that we proposed were uh, extending the term of the mayor to four years, um, making all the uh, school committee and council member terms two years. Um, we were, uh, one of the largest changes is to hand the gavel from city council meetings from the mayor who currently holds the gavel to the president <coughs> of the council. We felt that that enhanced the separation of powers um, and increased accountability of both the mayor and the council. Um, we also increased the, increased the threshold for signatures for large races from 100 um, to 150 for the mayor, but not for the ward races, which remain uh, just 50. 
and we cleaned up a lot of language um, within the charter. Um, we also uh, felt it was important to increase transparency in the compensation of elected officials. Uh, we do that by mandating a, um, a line item veto um, in the new charter uh, that breaks out compensation issues so all of us will know what our elected officials are being paid. And we also set up a salary and compensation co commission that will meet um, to look at compensation issues and to provide independent third party uh, input as to what the proper compensation is for elected officials. Again, if you have questions, go on the city website, look at the new chart, <coughs> contact your council member, contact people who served on the, on the uh, drafting um, group and, and ask us questions. We'd be happy to explain why we, um, why we uh, did what we did. And again, get, get out to vote on Tuesday in favor of the charter. Thank you. Okay. Um <coughs> That's the formal list. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak? Okay. If you could just uh, identify your Jeez, name. I thought I had signed. Uh, my name is Dave Stevens. I actually chaired the drafting committee, and I wanted to share some thoughts further on what Ta Todd has said. We also uh, recommended that there be a commission established to take a look at the e look e electoral process. Um, the purpose there being that there was a lot of very spirited debate and I think a lot of good points from all sides as to whether we need to retain a primary, should we look at instant runoff voting, uh, when our elections should be, how our elections should be conducted. And we felt that the time frame that was put forward is not enough for us to come with a valid conclusion that would get the opinions of all the uh, city in Involved. So we recommended that a commission be established for that as well. And if there is a yes vote on Tuesday, then that commission would need to move fairly fast because we're informed by our city clerk that they'll be looking to uh, purchase new voting machines in a couple of years. And we'd want to make sure that that commission's work is done so the m voting machines that we were to purchase fit the new voting techniques if they were to change. Um, I want to just point out that this has been a three-year process that it started with the ordinance, your ordinance committee. It recommended a special study committee, which is made up of citizens and city councilors. That recommended a draft committee to do a comprehensive review and overhaul of the charter, which was our charge. We took care of 129 years of um, what became confusing and um, contradictory parts of the charter to make it concise and workable and accessible to the citizens. Um, we uh, worked with uh, UMass, the Collins Institute, Steve McGoldrick, who helped us work through it and brought it, he brought in a, a charter that we used, a boilerplate that we used and worked from that. We put the Northampton parts into it. Um, we recommended to you folks, I was very pleased and heartened by the debate that you folks had. It was really enlightening to me to see the level of dialogue that you folks had arguing the charter because it this is not a um, easy solutions. There aren't, um, we don't all agree on all parts of the charter, but you, I thought the debate that the nine of you conducted was civil and appropriate, and I think it showed how well and how involved the people of Northampton are in this process. Uh, it then went to the city solicitor and um, the city clerk and Steve McGoldrick, who had to review 100 special acts and integrate them into the charter, and um, that uh, took some time. It went to the mayor's office, then to the House, then to the Senate, then to the governor, and now it's back to the citizens to vote on this on Tuesday. It'll be a separate ballot. When you go in, you'll vote on one ballot for all the elected officials, then there'll be a separate ballot for this charter. I know that there's some questions about the charter, but my reaction is vote yes, because on Wednesday, November 7th, if you have changes, you can start the process. We have made it easier to amend the charter from this day forward if the vote is yes. If not, you have to return and start the whole process all over again. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Steve. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak during the public comment period? Okay, hearing none, I will, uh, I will convene the regular meeting and ask the clerk to call the board. Here. Present. Here. Here. Present. Present. Here. Okay. Uh, the first item on your agenda is the approval of your minutes of October 18th, 2012. Move to approve. Second. Is there any discussion on those minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 
Any abstentions? Abstain. Uh, we have one abstention. Uh, Councilor Spector abstains. Okay, so those uh, minutes have been accepted. The next item on the agenda, uh, proclamations, resolutions, awards, and recognition. Um, I have a proclamation to issue this evening. Um, it's entitled, Never Another Death Month, November 2012. Whereas organizers seek to dedicate Never Another Death Month to the memory of all adolescents and adults who have died as a direct result of alcohol and drug use, and whereas many youths have died of alcohol and drug-related causes due to a lack of appropriate and available treatment facilities in Western Massachusetts, and whereas there is a critical need for an adolescent alternative rehabilitation and treatment facility in Western Massachusetts that acknowledges the unique challenge of working with adolescents in a multi-service approach to rehabilitation and treatment, and whereas rehabilitation and treatment with supportive counseling and life skills training presents a positive alternative to the death and incarceration of the growing population of youth addicted to drugs and alcohol. And whereas organizers would like to acknowledge the dedication and work of the staff of Hairston House, Grace House, and Tapestry Harm Reduction, as well as the work of the Northampton Prevention Coalition, a community-driven effort to raise awareness of these issues. It is important to acknowledge the recovery community who share their experience, strength, and hope with those struggling from the disease of addiction. And whereas Never Another Death seeks to raise awareness of the problem of drug and alcohol addiction on behalf of the families who have lost their sons and daughters, brothers, sisters, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, and friends, now, therefore, I, David J. Narkowitz, Mayor of the City of Northampton, do hereby proclaim November 2012 as Never Another Death Month in the City of Northampton and encourage the residents of the city to support those who counsel, house, and employ individuals in recovery and to remember those of our neighbors who have been lost to drug and alcohol addiction and those who remain at risk. In witness whereof, I have set my hand and affixed the seal of the city of Northampton. David Jane Arkwitz, Mayor. And Joyce, would you like to come forward to uh, accept the proclamation? Thank you so much. And uh, Harrison and Grace and Tapestry really do good work in the city. And I really wanted to include them this year in the proclamation. Thank you. Thanks, Joyce. Okay, uh, the next item on your agenda is one minute announcements. Are there any, Councillor Marianne LaBarge? Um, I just want to um, bring forth the city clerk's office, I want to thank Wendy Mosna. I want to thank Pamela Powers, um, Elizabeth Yakovich, and also Mary Ellen Scott. They have been working long, long hours. I went in to help to volunteer a couple of weeks ago. They are spending evenings and Wendy is in there every weekend, Friday nights, Saturdays during the day, and Sundays. And I'm, I'm just saying that it would be really nice if people would just call and say thank you to them because there's a lot of work going on. They're still kind of behind yet, and they're trying to catch up because of this special election. So I think they all should be commended because they are working so hard. Just call after the election, though. <laughs> Because they don't need any more phone calls. But they anymore. can have visitors come in That's and true. say thank you. Councillor Freeman Daniels? Oh, yeah. He knew I was going to raise my hand before I even raise my hand. <laughs> <laughs> this Saturday, uh, C3 will be ha having a celebration in, com um, in celebrating the completion of the uh, mural on North Street that is uh, right um, by the underpass. It's from noon to 3. 
and uh, there should be, I understand, a little bit of music. You'll get to meet the artists, and uh, the mural is done there. And, and uh, I want to thank the War Three Neighborhood Association and uh, the Northampton Arts Council for grants, and as well as all of the uh, very generous uh, residents of Northampton who contributed um, to C3 to complete the project this Saturday at noon. Are there any other announcements from the council? Okay, hearing none. Oh, sorry. Just a quick I just feel I want to say a public thanks um, to the Department of Public Works and Wayne Fiden and members of the Transportation Parking Commission for the work that's been that's occurred on South Street in our traffic calming effort. I've gotten great feedback about the bright green lines and the um, the uh, larger bike path. I mean, the, the bike lane next to the cars and the narrowing of the road and that people are driving slower and I just want to thank our city for making this possible and thanks to the mayor as well for just making it all happen this this has been a real community effort and it really is making Northampton safer so thanks thank you any other announcements okay hearing none we'll move on to the next item on the agenda um, we have a series of appointments uh, this evening. Um, the first uh, one is a reappointment. Uh, this is uh, to the Agricultural Commission, uh, and it is Robert Bollinger of 460 North Farms Road. Uh, and this would be for a term of September 2012 to September 2015. Um, uh, to refer. Oh, no, it's a reappointment. We don't have to refer. Yeah. I'm sorry, I think I will correct that. Move to approve. Second. You need to suspend, suspend rule, 30. rule 30. I would like to move to suspend rule 30. <laughs> <laughs> so there's been a Hold motion. Hold on, what is rule 30? What would you <laughs> <laughs> So there's been a motion made to suspend your rules referring to committee. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? I'd aye. like to move approval, please. Okay. Second. Second. I would uh, recognize anyone from the committee if they wish to speak about this particular reappointment. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Do you want to? Speak? No, because it's a reappointment, and you apparently are mayor handling. Yes, and I did speak with Mr. Vollinger, and he's been on the committee. Um, he's uh, in, and has been an active member and is involved in agriculture. Um, actually, is also an employee at the Smith Vocational at Agricultural High School. Um, and was happy to continue to serve. So that's why I'm making the I, I just want to thank you for, for that. And f this, this helps streamline the process that mm -hmm. when you're making the reappointments, we know that right. that's all being checked on. And so we really appreciate that. And uh, thank you for doing that. Yep. Um, okay, so is there any question, other questions about this appointment or, or, com or comments? Okay. All those in favor then of reappointing uh, Robert Bollinger to the Agriculture Commission say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Uh, uh, similar situation, the next uh, item is another reappointment. Uh, this is to the Northampton Energy and Sustainability Commission. Um, Aiden Maynard of 12 Perkins Avenue in Florence. Uh, a term uh, November 2012 uh, to November 2015. Move to, to suspend, suspend rule. rule 30. Second. Second. Okay. Um, all those in favor of suspending rule say aye. 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 Opposed? Move Any approval, abstentions? Please. Second. Okay. There's been a motion made and seconded. Um, is there any uh, comment on Mr. Maynard? Oh. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I have had the pleasure to serve with Aiden. In fact, Aiden on the Energy Commission, uh, he is he's a star there. And he brings he brings a, a breadth of knowledge that uh, is unparalleled in the community. And what, you, you couldn't hire someone of his qualifications without going broke. We're very fortunate to have him consider uh, being continued continued service on this commission. He's also the chair, correct? Uh, he is still the chair. Yes. Yeah. So it would be nice to keep the chair as well. Councillor Schwartz, did you have only to echo? Okay. Any other? Questions about this, Councilor? Is Perkin, Perkins Avenue is considered Florence? Uh, it's a good point. Yeah, it is not. Ward, Ward one. <laughs> it is not. Detail, yeah. Yeah. It's not even close to Florence. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Unless Ward there's one. been a secession issue. With it, then <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know if there's if there's quotas or something. I mean, if we need to include him in Florence for some quota. It was transposed from. from it's yeah. Ward one. All right. All right. I suspect it was a, a typo, but. 
Uh, we all live in Northampton. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <So. laughs> Definitely. Um, so <laughs> he's not even. So we can make that correction. Twelve Perkins Avenue, Northampton. Um, any other comments or, or discussion about Mr. Uh, Maynard? Okay. Hearing none. All those in favor of reappointing, say aye. 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 Opposed. Any abstentions? Okay. Um, the next two appointments are appointments to the tree committee, and they're actually um, appointments that are by ordinance from two of uh, two uh, other boards, the planning board and the board of public works. The first uh, is an. I assume I can take them to take them, like, together. Take them together. together or okay. So the first is um, John Lutz, who serves on the planning board. Um, he would be the, the planning board's uh, representative to the tree committee. He'll be replacing Andrew Weir, and his term would expire in November 2015. Um, and then uh, Kay Christopher Hellman, um, who would be, again, the Board of Public Works representative to the tree committee, he would be replacing David Shearer, and his term would expire November 2015. Suspend Rule 30 on both. Okay. Second. Um, all those in favor of suspending rules say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Move to approve. Second it. Okay. Is there any discussion of these count? Yeah, Mayor, I think also because like one is coming from the planning board as a representative and the other from the Board of Public Works, I'm pretty sure it's required by ordinance that they have to have representatives to go ahead and be on these committees, correct? That's correct. The the, the tree committee spells out that there's a representative that's Put forward by the board um, for the, each of those two boards just a uh, just a, a question about the process here when we have an internal uh, an ordinance that says it has to have a representative from X committee does it say in the ordinance that there needs to be a referral of that to the appointments to com committee does anybody know that or should I as I, I chair check on that says, I don't think we've often had this debate about whether okay. these even should come to the council frankly, okay because we did give in the ordinance discretion to the committee to appoint someone but I think it's just assumed that under the charter, ultimately the council's the Fair enough. approve every appointment. So I know okay. we've always done it, sort of, um, you know, with the understanding that that the planning board is sending forward one of their own members, which you've already approved. As, a, as so, yeah. But we've always still gone through this process. Yeah. I, I think for the purposes of of the process, I think it's appropriate for these to come before us. I I mean, too. Maybe okay. If there is some problem or question or, mm -hmm. or something that, that even a contentious appointment, it's appropriate to have it come before us so that we have an opportunity to, to vet it. So. Okay. Um, Councilor. <coughs> I concur. Uh, the only other thing I'd add is, is that, uh, you know, um, these boards are uh, technically executive boards, so. The legislative oversight, I think, is required or should be required, should be required. in these circumstances. Okay. Um, all those then in favor of these two appointments to the tree committee say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. We have one late file. Uh, it's a taxi license, taxi cab license. We first, require a suspension of Rule 38. So move. Second. All those suspending rules say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so rules are suspended. And I have, uh, you have before you an application for a taxi cab a license uh, uh, for a Cosmic Cab. Um, and uh, you'll see that there's a motor vehicle, uh, an extra taxi that's, that uh, they would like to add. There's all the inspection um, and registration information. And uh, as well as liability insurance um, and and a check of the uh, any outstanding taxes that might be due to the city, which uh, which the uh, collector has confirmed that there are no outstanding taxes. So um, this was forwarded to us uh, by the city clerk uh, today. So hoping to have you act on it and not have it be delayed another couple of months. Um, I'd move approval. Second. Is there any discussion? Council? Yeah, I just want to say, haven't we, we've done this before with Cosmic Cab, I think, didn't we? Yeah, so I'm, I, I'm, willing to, I'm willing to vote it up again, but uh, I'm not really sure why we're, we had this. It's a new vehicle. It's a separate it's vehicle. Another vehicle. Oh. Adding another vehicle. We have to do this for every vehicle when a cab mm -hmm. adds to it, when a, when a 
livery service as to his fleet? Yeah. Wow. I believe each individual. <laughs> yeah. They were a small town. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I think, when, like, for example, when Go I Green Cab or, or when the successor to Green Cab came, you approved all of their vehicles on yeah, mass yeah. at once. Okay. And when you approved these other ones, it was just on a vehicle by vehicle basis. So. I, I would say that this is actually encouraging. I, I've sp I spoke with Jeff Miller and that uh, he has a business that's, that is burgeoning in the community and providing a service. So clearly there's a need. He's satisfying that need, and uh, it's good to see. I think it represents uh, the fact that, uh, first of all, the need exists, but the fact that the, we have this means to accommodate that with Mr. Miller's good work here. I, I find this very encouraging. I'm, and and all and and it, it is it, it, the vehicle he's getting is uh, the Chevy Suburban. This is a substantial vehicle. This is for larger runs, from what I understand. Than doing the uh, being able to haul larger quantities of people, larger quantities of stuff. So it's all to the good, by my reckoning. Any other comments about the um, application for a taxi cab license? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the application say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so that application is approved. I will now uh, recess the meeting and uh, ask the clerk to call the roll of the Finance Committee. Present. Here. Present. Okay, so we have uh, three, we have a, a quorum of the Finance Committee. Thank God. Um, so uh, the first item before you this evening, this is upon the recommendation of the mayor and the finance committee, ordered that the following sums, um, and I will read uh, the, their uh, from three separate accounts. Um, uh, the first is account 6400 3407077 $17,698.51 which represents an unexpended amount originally appropriated for the phase five of the landfill project, engineering and permitting. For, uh, uh, then a second account of $40,598.92, unexpended amount originally appropriated for five, phase five of the landfill project for expansion. And then a third account containing $29,955.99, unexpended amount originally appropriated for phase four of the landfill project for improvements. This is a total of $88,253.42 be programmed and transferred into account 6400-340702 repro to be used toward the costs involved in decommissioning of the solid waste landfill leachate plant. Is there a uh, motion to recommend that? Uh, so moved. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. And uh, Mr. Huntley is here this evening. If we could recognize. I make a him. motion to recognize Mr. Huntley. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 <clears throat> evening, everyone. Um, I was asked to come here tonight to talk about this. In brief, basically, we have money left over from the phase five expansion, which is uh, uh, voted on by the citizens of Northampton, so we have remaining money in that. And the phase four was a construction project back a number of years ago, which is the area that we're currently landfilling in and going into closure next year. Then can you uh, talk about why we're decommissioning a leachate plant? Um, <clears throat> the leachate treatment plant hasn't been used in probably close to 10, if not 12 years at this point. It was built as part of the phase one <coughs> project. The state required it, and it was in use for approximately 10 years or so. Uh, the quantity, or not the quantity, but the strength of the leachate didn't require pretreatment. So currently it's actually pumped into the sanitary system is treated at the wastewater treatment plant. As part of uh, closing down the landfill, uh, we decided that we needed to decommission the plant also. A lot of process equipment in there. The leachate lagoons have been backfilled and seeded over. Um, and basically uh, the building is actually being, I shouldn't say retrofitted, but look at being used for uh, seasonal equipment storage for the city and record keeping. And um, the equipment that's being decommissioned and removed from there, is that salvageable for resale or is that just uh, filling up someone else's landfill? It actually, no, it's, it's uh, most of it went through an auction process or was salvaged by metal by the contractor that we hired for the work. Councilor LaBarge. Yes, um, 
we took a tour through that, mm -hmm. right? So what we're looking at is removing all the equipment out of that building, correct? That's correct. And the Consular Dwight just answered one of my questions, which I did talk to Susan Wright about this week, in regards to the equipment that you want to remove out of there and where you are going to put it, okay? Now, so we're going to have a building but just a shell. And we're looking at central service coming in and bringing in file cabinets and whatever in there. It could be it could be school department, central services, city hall, DPW records. There's a large contained room that was part of a digester building. It's a actually blocked in segregated uh, building within the building, um, and the rest of it is going to be used, like I said, for seasonal equipment storage. In fact, I had a conversation with David Pomerantz today about storing school equipment up there. I can just say it's very much needed if anyone's ever ventured down into the basement of City Hall. There's boxes, records, you know, every, there's just, you know, uh, there's every nook and cranny of that basement is filled with, with storage. And under our public records law, we have to maintain those records. And I would not consider where they're being kept now as climate control. <laughs> um, and so this is going to be great for us to be able to create an actual archival um, storage area that we can start to offload some of these uh, records uh, and, and have them out there. This is tax records, voting records, uh, birth certificate records, all the things that we have to maintain for many years. So this is a great project. It is. The project's moving along great. should be done hopefully in the next month or so. Councilor. How is it that these unexpended funds are so old, six, seven, eight years ago? Um, <coughs> GPW was in charge of in 02 when the phase four expansion was done. But I know this is the current area that we're landfilling at this point. Uh, the money that was borrowed in 03 was more than likely for the contaminant transport study and uh, the initial uh, permitting of the landfill itself. The funds borrowed in 07 um, were money actually that we just stopped spending for the phase five expansion, engineering design, groundwater studies, things of that nature. I could add to that also if, if sure, um, please. just, just that, um, we've been trying to go through all of our old, uh, through, through these kinds of uh, borrowings or accounts that have been set up for capital projects to try to identify monies that haven't been expended. So this is an example of that. And um, we, I know we've come forward to you with some other similar transfers where we found just the tail end of something so that because we, we want to get that back into play so we can use it for other capital projects. And, but this is good because it's, it's within the Solid Waste Enterprise Fund. These are all funds within the Solid Waste Enterprise Fund. So we are able to use them within the, for the same purposes. And That's keep correct. It's already borrowed money and exactly. we have a use for it. Yeah. Counselor. What type of equipment is in there that you're going to remove? It's like a mini wastewater treatment plant. There's presses, there's little digesters, there's uh, chemical addition tanks and units and motors and pumps. And so who would buy that? Um, a lot of it was uh, cut up as metal and salvaged as metal. Um, some of it went to auction. They were looking for buyers of, uh, I'm trying to remember one, the generator that was up there. It was a 20 plus year old generator seen its life. Uh, I believe it was uh, salvaged off or auctioned off at about $6,000 by the contractor. So it's a pretty much an empty shell right now. Any other questions uh, for Mr. Huntley about this particular transfer? In finance? Okay. So all those in favor of recommending uh, the transfer, uh, say aye. 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 Any, well, that's. that's <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Um, all right. Uh, the next item uh, is upon the recommendation of the Mayor and Finance Committee, um, ordered that the following sums, and th the first is an account 3000-340244. Uh, uh, $2,987.77 of unexpended amount originally appropriated for sewer work. And then from account 3000-340254, $4,506.86 unexpended amount originally appropriated for Elm Street drainage repair for a total of $7,494.63 be reprogrammed and transferred into account 3000-340254-repro to be used towards storm drain work on Sylvester Road. Is there a motion in Move finance? Move to approve. 
Second. Second. Okay. Mr. Huntley? Uh, we have two culvert replacements we're currently working on on Sylvester Road. One is taking a undersized culvert and putting in twin culverts side by side. And the other one is up by the Zobolic Farm that's in uh, need of repair also. So we have a need for this uh, since we don't have a, a capital budget for stormwater. This is great news to find money like this. Okay. Councilor? And I want to thank you, Ned, and your department because we've been sitting on this for quite a long time. And I'm glad to see that this money is going to be used for that because I know you've attended several meetings with me with residents and I'm happy about seeing this being done. I'm pleased with it too, believe me. Exactly. Councilor Adams. Well, I have the same question. I guess it might be the same answer, but maybe that's 96. Is yeah. <laughs> I don't have I I started working in the city in 2000. I really don't have the answer for this one. <laughs> we, we can't find any records. I mean, we think this is probably from the 80s or the 90s. This is old money. Really? Mm -hmm. yeah. Councilor. Yes. Susan, you had told me when I had called you, which I never knew, like the account number 3000 actually is telling us that it's borrowed money, correct? And I didn't realize that. So this is old money sitting on the books. And what we're doing is taking that old money and we're going to be using it exactly where it should be used at. So, so this is the equivalent of taking a jacket out of storage and finding a $20 bill in the pocket all of a sudden yeah. that you hadn't worn for many years. Is that? Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I prefer it that way than the other way. That's good. That's <laughs> and it's... Counselor. How many jackets do we have in storage? <laughs> we're, we're, we're actually we're very committed to trying to find all of those jackets, and uh, which is why we've been coming forward to you with with a series of these kinds of orders uh, in cases where we can't research the history of. We've been just trying to close it, close out these because again, it sits out there, and it's sitting out there, and and. Uh, and in some cases, I think perhaps the project was completed. There's a little bit of money left over, and no one thought to say we should take it out of this little silo that it's in and just put it back in. It's also a little bit tricky because you have to, in the case of borrowing um, from the sewer enterprise fund, or like the previous one, you kind of need to keep it within the sewer um, arena. So, so we're trying to find in this case a project that it can be diverted to where there's a need so uh, we're we're trying to go through all of these and work with the auditor's office to identify any of these accounts that are still out there thank so, you yeah. Councilor. and if we really look at the big picture we're benefiting the taxpayers and I think there is the importance right there any other questions about this one for mr. Huntley okay um, all those in favor uh, in finance committee say aye. 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 Okay. Um, and uh, continuing the theme here, uh, this is upon the recommendation of the mayor and the finance committee. Um, order that the following sums: uh, the first is from account six thousand uh, three four zero five four seven fourteen thousand six hundred sixty nine dollars and ninety four cents expended unexpended amount originally appropriated for new equipment for the sewer department account six thousand three four zero five four nine two thousand dollars seven hundred two thousand seven hundred and sixty nine dollars and seventy seven cents unexpended amount originally appropriated for wastewater treatment plant modifications account six thousand dash three four zero five five zero nineteen thousand seven hundred and twenty six dollars and sixty seven cents unexpended amount originally appropriated for wastewater treatment plant modifications for a total of $37,166.08 be reprogrammed and transferred into account 6,340550 repro to be used towards purchase, maintenance, and repair of equipment at the wastewater treatment plant. Move approval. Second. S second. Okay. Would you like Mr. Yes, Huntley please. to explain this? Ned, how much damage actually occurred there? And also, how much is covered by insurance? To date, we have about $120,000 in bills from the uh, incident that we had. Uh, we believe that all but $10,000, which is our deductible, will be covered by insurance. Okay. Thank you. 
Were there any subsequent penalties or fines? Uh, we have not heard from the enforcement division, but I was assured by Department of Environmental Protection that we would hear from them. Oh, that's that's very thoughtful of them. So we're, that's just that's still hanging out there. That's it? correct. The uh, enforcement, any fines or penalties, that's correct. And would you maybe just want to describe the types of uh, of equipment or repair? I know it's generators sure. and 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 such. There's a there's a there's a litany of needs down at the wastewater treatment plant, being 30 plus years old at this point. Um, it's past its useful point. In fact, uh, with the generator, we're looking at the new generator and switching gear and. A conversation with the mayor the other day. It's it's a 3.3 million dollar project to replace just that alone, let alone upgrades to the plant. We had a uh, piece of a uh, control logic board go for the uh, variable frequency drives uh, just the other day, and that's a nine thousand dollar item to fix. There's always need to be spending some money down there. Things break down. It's a it's a rough environment down there, harsh environment to work in. Any other questions for Mr. Huntley about these transfers, Councillor? Actually, relative to that, um, if we were hit with the storm as it was originally predicted for Hurricane Sandy, would would you have been confident of our ability to handle and manage uh, uh, a larger storm event? Basically, when the wastewater treatment plant hits 20 million gallons a day, it's a pass through with some chlorination. So the plant actually doesn't treat it anymore, it just does some spot chlorination. Uh, the plant has got a capacity of a little over 8 million gallons a day. That's its capacity and currently runs at about uh, 4 million gallons a day on average. Uh, the plant, it would, like I said, it would have been a pass-through. Um, our concerns would have been flood control and make sure that flood control is operational on an event like that. Because there was at one point predictions of close to 4 inches of rain? Uh, the, the initial predictions were 5 to 10. Was very concerned with <laughs> yeah. the last event we had. Uh, they predicted five day and received four and a half inches. So we were we were wrestling with putting up the flood control walls and prepping and getting ready for that. And then we, as we watched the weather come in, we decided that we didn't need to and uh, yes. dodged a big bullet in Northampton again. Yeah, thankfully. Yes. Any other questions for Mr. Huntley? Oh, just Carney. for context. If you might recall, in Hurricane Floyd, was there well over six inches of rain? I mean, we had significant flooding in, in portions of the city. And Floyd was 1990? Yeah, two. Five, two, I wasn't here in the city at that point, oh, so okay. I don't so know what, what happened. Other questions about this particular transfer in finance? Okay. Um, all those in favor and finance of approving, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, okay, I believe that completes all the items for DPW. Do other members of the council wish Mr. Huntley to stay or can he? No, I think he should go. Okay. Thank you very much. Mr. Thank you very much. Have a good night. I'll go. Okay. So um, the finance director uh, did provide you with a report which contains all, um, all three of these uh, items with descriptions of them. Just a quick uh, question. Is that a printed report or did we get that uh, electronically? Uh, you probably got it as part of your packet. Okay. I was looking for a document name. I just didn't find it. It's, it's also on the website. Okay. I'll look there. So, uh, so that, uh, that uh, concludes the... Um, the business for the finance committee for this evening. Um, any new bit? I don't believe we have any new business, so I would entertain a motion to adjourn the finance. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor of adjourning the finance committee, say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. So we've adjourned the finance committee, and we'll now return into the full city council. Uh, the next item on the regular city council agenda is the, are the reports of committees. And you have before you tonight a uh, um, report, reports from the Committee on Social Services and Veterans Affairs. Their minutes of June 18th, 2012, July 16th, 2012, and September 17th, 2012. Move to approve. Second. I, second. Okay. Any discussion of those three sets of minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 
Okay. Uh, now we move on to the financial orders, um, and we'll pick up right where we. Uh, oh, before we move on there, because uh, we may have some sec we have some second readings coming up. I wanted to appoint Councillor Adams and Councillor Labarge to the enrollment committee for this evening. Um, so, first on the financial orders, uh, this is again. Um, transfer of uh, funds from three separate accounts uh, totaling $88,253.42 um, in solid waste accounts uh, for costs involved in the decommissioning of the solid waste landfill leachate plant. Is there approved. Second. Okay. There's been a motion made and seconded on first reading. Any discussion of this? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so that is unanimous. The second item is um, uh, transfers from two accounts uh, in the sewer uh, area, and that is a total of $7,494.63 uh, to be reprogrammed towards storm drain work on Sylvester Road. Move to approve. And second. Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. And then the third financial order on first reading. Uh, this is uh, the reprogramming of three uh, accounts uh, for a total of $37,166.08 uh, to be used towards purchase, maintenance, and repair of equipment at the wastewater treatment plant. Move to approve. Second. Okay. All, any discussion on that? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So those three will come back to you on first reading. The next uh, item is a, is a financial order that comes back to you um, on second reading. Um, Whereas the, this is upon the recommendation of the mayor and the finance committee, uh, ordered that whereas the health department wishes to establish a public health sharps disposal revolving fund to provide financial resources to ensure proper disposal of needles, syringes, or other lancets, whereas such a fund will enable the health department to have a sharps disposal program that will be offered to Northampton constituents and business owners who generate sharps. This program is to help reduce and or eliminate the amount of sharps that end up in household trash or landfills. Whereas revenues will be generated from the sale of approved needle disposal boxes, it is anticipated that the, need, that the pricing point of the box will cover the cost of the box and the disposal fee of the needles. Whereas the City Council, in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53, E and a half, may authorize the establishment of a revolving fund for the Health Department, <coughs> FY 2013, for the operation of the Sharps Disposal Program. Now, therefore, be in order that the City Council authorizes a Sharps Disposal Program Revolving Fund in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53, E and a half, for fiscal year 2013. Revenues will be generated from the sale of approved needle disposal containers. Revenues from sales will cover the cost of Sharps Disposal containers, community education material, and other medical slash office equipment needs for the program. Receipts received but not expended in fiscal year 2013 shall be carried over to fiscal year 2014 if this fund is reauthorized for fiscal year 2014 by the City Council. The Director of the Health Department, in consultation with the public health nurse, shall be authorized to expend from the fund for the stated purposes. No further appropriations shall be required, provided, however, that no expenditures shall be made in excess of the balance of the fund nor shall total expenditures for the fiscal year exceed the sum of $15,000. Is there a motion to approve on second reading? So moved. Second. Second. Any further discussion or questions about this? <coughs> Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, that's approved on second reading unanimously. The uh, next order again is coming to you on second reading. This is upon the recommendation of the Mayor and the Finance Committee. Ordered that the expenditure limit for Public Health Nursing Revolving Fund, which was reauthorized for fiscal year 2013, be increased from $5,000 to $20,000. Vote to approve. Second. Okay. Any discussion of uh, this increase in that revolving fund? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So that's approved on second reading. 
The next is uh, upon the recommendation of the mayor and the finance committee order that city council rescinds $700,000 of the $1.5 million borrowing authorization under Mass General Law Chapter 44 S71 for the Bradford Street pump station project approved by city council on August 9th, 2010. This will leave in place an authorization for $800,000 for this project, which was permanently bonded on February 9th, 2012. Second. Second. Okay. Um, any discussion on this? Again, on second reading? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Mr. Mayor, can we call a recess? Okay. We're going to call a brief recess so our clerk can get some water. <laughs> We are now returning from a recess of the November 1st, 2012 meeting of the Northampton City Council. And we are now moving um, from financial orders into the ordinances portion of the agenda. We have a series of ordinances um, that have uh, are coming to you on second reading. And I uh, wanted to ask the council's preference as to how we, you would like me to bring these forward on second reading. Break them um, up. Break them up. Uh, well, no, take first, take for example, as a group, first uh, through uh, four to five Very all happy. contain uh, our deal with section. Um, oh, it's under mayor's office. Uh, well, the first one is section 312 33, so we should take that one individually. Uh, so the first one is amends section 312 33, which is location of parking areas for municipally owned or municipally operated motor vehicles, uh, parking restrictions at certain municipal buildings. Um, and uh, this uh, uh, lays out the location of parking area uh, for municipally owned or municipally operated motor vehicles, uh, primarily both on Crafts Avenue as well as in the lot outside council chambers here behind City Hall. So this comes to you on second reading. Is there a motion to approve? Move to approve. Second. Second. Okay. Is there any further discussion or on this particular ordinance? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving on second reading say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. You can go so, take those signs down now. What's that? You can go take those signs down now. Oh, no, I won't take any signs. <laughs> um, Councilor Freeman Daniels will do that after the meeting. Uh, <laughs> so let's see. Um, the, uh, let's see, the uh, next series of ordinances all deal with section 22-115, uh, Northampton Transportation and Parking Commission membership, section 22-119, Northampton Transportation and Parking Commission powers and duties, section 22-120, Northampton Transportation and Parking Commission bylaws, rules, and procedures, section 22-121, Northampton Transportation and Parking Commission parking receipts, and section 22-123, Northampton Transportation and Parking Commission staffing. Uh, these are all before you on second reading. Is there a motion? I move as a group, second it. Okay, so it's been moved and seconded as a group. Are there any comments or, Councilor? I just wanted to say that um, for those watching at home that, are, that feel as though we're rushing through a lot of really important ordinance, um, this was, discussed over many months at the Transportation Parking Commission, uh, hammered out through the Ordinance Committee and then came up to this body last month and was, um, I, I think that we, we discussed them pretty significantly given how mostly small and uh, cosmetic they are. Um, so, you know, I think I'm, I'm glad that my fellow counselors want to take these as a group. Uh, Any further? Comments or discussion on this, uh, this set of ordinances? Hearing none on second reading, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So the next um, item is amending uh, section 40-5, a list of enforcing officers and penalties for non-criminal disposition. Uh, this would uh, change uh, uh, in the in the reference to parking director would be eliminated um, and uh, and would leave in place as the enforcement agency board of health uh, director public works director Northampton police and or their designees. Move to approve. Second. Second. Okay. 
Any uh, questions or discussion about this uh, change? Hearing none, all those in favor on second reading say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so that's approved unanimously. Uh, the next item, uh, uh, two items actually, uh, deal with section uh, 2810, Department of City Property slash Central Services, Duties and Responsibilities, and then section 28-11, uh, Department of City Property Central Services, Additional Areas of Responsibility of Director. In one case, um, it is adding um, uh, Conservation Commission and Recreation Commission to those lists. Um, as well as the same change uh, being made in the um, second ordinance. Uh, <coughs> and I also believe that the Transportation and Parking Commission was removed from that list, uh, giving, denoting the fact that the Central Services is now the primary maintenance agency for the parking garage and parking facilities. So those are the two ordinances and the, and the effect of the changes that are before you. Move to approve. Second. Okay. Any further discussion on those? Okay. All those in favor on second reading say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Uh, so let's see. Um, the next item um, is amending uh, section 312-102, schedule one, parking prohibited all times on Market and Bait Street. Then there's a, I believe, a companion ordinance that amends Section 312-102, Schedule 1, Parking Prohibited at All Times on North Street. Um, and those... Move those two as a group. Those two, um, there's no motion made. Mm -hmm. Is there a second? Okay. And I don't know, Councillor, if you'd like to just describe these quickly again. Yeah, uh, briefly, these are, um, these were introduced at the Transportation Parking Commission there. Um, part of the reconstruction of North Street, uh, basically, um, specifically at the intersection of North and Market, the intersection is becoming more narrow and parking is going to be eliminated in some spots. And uh, then there's also some um, parking that's going to be cleaned up further up North Street and uh, some spaces. Actually, the net is going to be m more parking. Uh, but it's being removed from a few places for visibility's sake uh, on cr near crosswalks and uh, near a uh, um, mixed-use building on North Street. Okay. Any questions from counselors about these two changes? Hearing none, all those in favor on second reading say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. The next, um, actually, there's a, well, there's a set of ordinances, and there's been a request for two readings on them. These are being uh, recommended by the, uh, the mayor, Councilor Murphy, Chief Russell Sinkowitz, and the Transportation and Parking Commission. Um, Mr. Mayor, I move, I move uh, ordinances 12 through 16 as a group. Okay. I like that one. I also like, oh, I'm sorry. Wait for a second. Let's see. I've got... Um, I think because of the fact that these are, this is the first time they've come to the council. I don't know. We may just want to go through them. Um, unless, <coughs> can describe, unless someone can, you can read them just, all. Well, I, I can. They're, they're also all directly related. Yeah, they all large. pertain yeah, to the. They all pertain to the construction of the new parking deck, for the police station, and they make changes yep. in and around right, the so, parking structure. Mm -hmm. um, I'm g I move these as a group w with the stipulation that each one be read. I'll second that. Okay. Okay. So, um, so I will take them then in, uh, I guess, in chronological order here. So I will start uh, with the first, which is uh, uh, amending section 312, 110, uh, section B. Um, and this is dealing with off street parking with reserved spaces. Um, and it deals with uh, creation of tow-away zones, and it inserts a new section uh, called Parking Area um, Gothic Street. The location is the westerly side of Gothic Street, police station parking structure, and the reserved use is 52 spaces ground level for court and Hampshire Council of Government personnel only, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. So that's the first 
that's the first thing that's being added uh, to the ordinances. Then um, the next item would be a deletion of section 312-110 um, and, and it would be deleting an off street parking area that's entitled Gothic Street, westerly side behind police station, seven parking spaces at the rear of the NIS bank, one hour class 1A. Um, and uh, that ordinance would actually be deleted um, as those spaces will no longer exist. Um, and then the next item is uh, section 312-103, schedule two, no parking certain times. Uh, this is again on Gothic Street on the westerly side of Gothic Street. Uh, and it provides that from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., Monday through Friday, except holidays, official police vehicles only. And this is uh, five parking spaces between the parking structures, vehicular entry, and the exit driveways. So that is, again, uh, designating a section of the new parking structure that will be for police vehicles only. Then the next is section uh, schedule 16 on street and off street handicapped parking spaces and this is contained in section 312-117 which would be revised. It would add um, uh, and this this would be in a section which lists all of the off street handicapped parking spaces. It would add Gothic Street parking police structure lower level three spaces abutting the interior pedestrian walkway and then on the Center Street police lot, one space abutting the station main entrance door. So this would create handicapped spaces within the structure. And then the final ordinance uh, is uh, revising again section 312-109, um, which is a schedule of on-street parking meter zones. Uh, the location would be in Gothic Street. It would be on the westerly side. It would be from the parking structures southerly exit to 20 feet north of Main Street and these would be uh, two hour class 1B meters. So that's the, those are all of them. Councilor Freeman Daniels. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, with the sort of some of the sponsors not being here and your chairing, uh, let me just comment as to the vice chair of the Transportation Parking Commission. Uh, this, um, the, the spaces, the, the timing of the spaces on the floor of the police parking, lo, uh, parking garage uh, being open to the public after five was something that the uh, police chief painstakingly worked out with, uh, um, with the, uh, the, the courts. Uh, and he, uh, he, I just want to confirm, uh, Councillor Freeman Daniels moved them as a group. Yes. Yes, and they were seconded. Yeah, I just we, she was just she was concerned that we hadn't had a motion yet, but he moved them, and I think Councilor Labarge seconded, seconded them. But the, he stipulated that I had to read each one of them. Okay. Yeah, no problem. I stipulate other stuff like that. Wear a hat. So uh, my I I thank the uh, police chief for um, negotiating with the with the court system in, in order to provide. Uh, public parking after after business hours, uh, and uh, the um, the council would uh, would back up the, the chief and and this I think good idea to have additional parking downtown by voting um, by voting uh, section three twelve one ten and the other pieces uh, the creation of handicap parking and uh, the additional. Uh, enshrinement of current practice, which is basically that the, the parking spaces there are used for, for police parking. Uh, I don't know why the council would have any problems with that. And then the final one, the chief called a bonus ordinance because uh, the 312-109 uh, was never, never actually made the parking on um, that side of Gothic Street um, legal. So now, now, it's, now it's actually legal. So. Uh, uh, these were moved as a group really because um, they're a part of the, the police station construction and the police um, parking garage construction and uh, and uh, they really need to be approved quickly so that uh, when the garage is complete, <coughs> all the uh, enforcement there is is uh, is legal thank you Councilor, um, I had a question from a constituent today about uh, 
the concern that was expressed was uh, city money being invested in a parking garage that provides parking for a state entity of the court system. Um, could you explain? Certainly. Uh, we, yeah, we, would you? Would we you? have a lease. We leased the property on which the building was, was, or at least part of the property on which it was constructed. We have a 99-year lease, and as a condition of the lease, we had to provide um, these 52 spaces that are described in this ordinance for both the court and the Council of Governments. Um, and basically, we're, we're leasing that created the airspace over those spots, which we could then build the second story, which is where police vehicles will be stored um, in order to create the space for, the, for storing our police vehicles. Because as folks know, we're building the current station on the old parking lot. Um, so, um, so that's that was the arrangement we knew going into it, and uh, and we are essentially building, creating all the spaces we need, and as part of the arrangement for the use of the land free, uh, we are essentially maintaining the same number of spaces that were already there prior to. And historically. Um, well, actually, when the county first, and then by the dissolution of the county government, uh, the state took over. But those lots were their exclusive province, and that at that time, and that that we had, as I recall, technically the community, the public was not allowed to use those spaces even after hours. And now this is this is granting and 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 creating um, public parking. That previously wasn't available, so we're actually expanding the parking inventory at least after five o'clock. That's correct. Yeah. Yep. That was again negotiated as part of the lease that, in exchange for us maintaining them, that we would have access to them for public parking after four hours. And and another enhancement worth noting is the charging stations for electric cars in in that will be included in the parking garage and that's some of the public charging stations. Yep. Other questions about the uh, parking structure? Okay. And again, um, if at all possible, because the, the, the at this point the, the garage is going to go up fast in the next week and a half. It's, it's because now it's just a matter of um, like a popping the Lincoln block Lincoln sort of putting the, all the panels that have already been precast in place. So there's been a request to do two readings if possible. So on first reading, though. Um, all those in favor of the ordinances as a group say aye. 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 Opposed? Move Any to suspend rules. Okay. Second. Okay, there's been a motion made uh, and seconded to suspend Rule 14. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Move the second reading, please. Okay. No okay. Okay. okay, there's been uh, second. There's been a motion made and seconded on second reading. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So those are approved. Um, the next is an ordinance which I believe there um, would need to be a request to withdraw the ordinance. Yes. Um, and not move it forward at this time. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So we're just going to, the next item which was. Um, an amendment to section 22-97 because of some additional information we're going to actually withdraw that from the agenda so that additional work can be made on that issue so that brings us to updates from the council president and committee chairs and i believe uh, the council president has an announcement an announcement uh announcing a tax classification hearing to be held on november 15 2012 at 8 p.m here in these chambers uh this is to determine the tax rate here in the city of Northampton. I, I invite the public to pay close heed and at least at the very least to hear the discussion and debate about how we set the tax rate for the community and why we set, I mean, wh why we choose to, what we end up choosing to do. <laughs> We're going to have to make a case for that. Um, and this this is actually, this is very significant and I hope that the public plays, pays close attention. This is one of the more important duties that we're charged with. So again, that's the November 15th, uh, 2012 meeting at 8 o'clock here in these chambers. Any other announcements, Mr. President? No. Uh, is there any new business? Hearing none, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? 
Good. The meeting is adjourned. At 8.